scrimmage. Okay, uh, really uh, pleased with the progress, not pleased with the penalties um, and some of the mental mistakes. But I think a couple things that stand out are guys like Jordan Scott really playing at a high level, um, Justin Hollins, um, Jalen Jelks, really disruptive guys, guys that not only can get to the quarterback, but are doing a much better job playing the run. We all know how good of a player Troy Dye is, but I think Isaac Slade really popped in the scrimmage, and so did guys like Keith Sims and Lana. It's great to have Lana healthy back and flying around out there. Um, but overall, you know, the, the front seven look like we've made tremendous progress. And uh, from a technical standpoint, from a strength and conditioning standpoint, it seems like we have a little bit more power. Um, we did a lot of ones versus two, so it's hard to gauge exactly how much that is. Um, but that they look really good. Ugo had a really good scrimmage as well, uh, which I think was important for all of us to see. Uh, Lamar Winston, you know, what can you say? The guy's motor is always dialed up. He doesn't have a governor. I mean, he just hits start and hits go and he goes. Um, and then on the flip side, the guy you were just talking to, number 10, has really taken that next step, the next step as a player. And there's more room for improvement, you know, and he'll tell you that. Uh, he did an excellent job getting us into the right protections most of the time when we were seeing a lot of zero blitz. He did a great job managing the run game, managing the tempo, and um, just being really accurate with the football and really on point with his decision making. Uh, Shane Lemieux continues to be the physical force up front. And uh, another year in the weight room, you can tell his body's continuing to change. I mean, his, his threshold for work is really it's mind boggling. He's a he's a really impressive offensive lineman. And I think um, Calvin Throckmorton, he's shown his versatility by jumping in there at center and has given us a lot and a tremendous option in the absence of Jay Canson. Uh, the running back uh, position was a mixed bag and they all had their moments, some real good ones. Tony Brooks James is running hard, getting better. We got to secure the football a lot better than what we did in the scrimmage. Ball came out a couple of times. Uh, CJ Verdell got a little bit of banged up. Uh, Taj Griffin explosive I mean made a couple runs I mean when he has a ball in his hands he's he's magic I mean he can make some things happen out of nothing and I think it gets lost also in the fact that he's a small guy but he runs hard he'll put his head down and run some people over he was really good and um, the young guys you know Travis Dye uh, did a really good job you know Cyrus did a really good job Jamal Elliott's going to get some more turns today he's a really good football player as well and um, the combination of the tight ends and the wide receivers, you saw Johnny Johnson made some really big plays in the scrimmage. Brandon Schooler took another step up, made a lot of really big plays. Um, and I'm trying to think of all the guys who we named the players of the scrimmage. The other one on the defensive side will be Brady Brees. Brady has found the knack, has a knack for finding the football and had himself another interception. He's had one every single practice so far in the spring. So um, a lot of work done, but uh, miles to go, like we always do, but certainly headed in the right direction, especially from a physicality standpoint. We put the ball down and said, we're going to run the ball, and you guys are going to stop the run. And we had some great trade-offs right there. And uh, I think that's the first step in our, our change in demeanor and culture as we go forward. You talk about culture and that demeanor and you know, wanting to be intense and physical, and the guys say, with you there, it's been a little different. How have you noticed their mindset sort of shift maybe from last year? The way they attack our daily processes. You know, you, and the thing is, we're working at it. We're not claiming to have arrived. We don't. We don't brag or boast about anything like that. But the way practice is structured, and you'll see, I know you guys have to leave in the first 15 minutes. If not, you'd hang out all day, right? You'd hang out with us, is that right? Is uh, It's structured, so it's a, this progression teaching as it relates to man blocking, double team blocks, and then full unit blocking. Uh, but there's no, no smoke and mirrors to it. I mean, we're learning how to strike defenders and how to strike blockers and play off each other so we can separate, shed, make plays, or sustain blocks and have guys go up to the next level. And that work is priceless. You can't get enough of it. And um, you know, you load up on as many reps as you can without treading on that line uh, of, of overworking, but it's an everyday thing and it shows up. It showed up in the scrimmage. So we'll continue to do that. I mean, today's the day where we'll focus on what we call second and 10, third and earn it, which means you put the ball down, it's second and 10. You get nine yards, you've earned third and one. You get zero yards, you've earned third and 10. Play it from there. Uh, and then we'll we'll kind of uh, transition into just putting the ball down, playing football, and going high tempo, uh, and get back to uh, some of our stuff that we've been working on. How's Dante Williams come onto your radar? How do you come onto my radar? He's on everybody's radar. <laughs> I mean, he's one of those. Uh, uh, to me, he's one of like the rest of our coaching staff. He's a five-star guy. You know, he's a guy that because as a teacher, as a mentor, um, as a guy that can form relationships 
with our student athletes and be a great representative. He is, uh, he's an impressive cat. Hopefully you guys have had a chance to speak with him. He is a guy that, um, in our opinion, my opinion, he's a difference maker for a program. And uh, he has tremendous ties out here on the West Coast. Our players have really gravitated towards him and uh, he's made a nice impact so far. You've been harping on penalties since day one. Mm -hmm. Is there improvement or is it still not close to where you want it to be? It's still not close. It's still not close. I think we can harp on it. We got to work it. We have seen some better results, especially as it relates to alignments. I think that's always one that drives you crazy, right? A guy aligns in the wrong spot. You know, it's like parking in the wrong spot. Come on, you know where you got to go. Make sure you get there. Um, <clears throat> but uh, in terms of the discipline of our hands, okay, um, I thought the defense showed great discipline in not having any, I would say, um, unforced here, like a late hit, out of bounds. I didn't see any of those. That was a problem last year. So well, we've been attacking this thing hard without taking away from our effort, from our demeanor. Because you want to be careful not making your team a, a, a team that tiptoes around. You still want to go right through people. And that's the goal. And we're going to continue play, preaching and teaching and working aggressive football. But we also got to teach that fine and clear line of what not to do. You feel like that message is coming across? Though? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, there are certain penalties that honestly, if you commit them consistently, it's a sign of selfishness, right? There's certain things that you know you could pull off on a block when you know you might hit him in the back. You hit him, you're going to blast him. The stadium's going to say, ooh, and ah, but we're going to bring that return back 15 yards for a clip. And I think our guys, our guys want to do right by each other. Um, that's why we had that team building kind of event after our scrimmage the other day. We want to continue to take a deep dive into each other as people to get to know each other's stories. And once we know each other's stories, we build more respect for each other. We want to play harder for each other. So it's, uh, we kind of layer this thing as we go along to build it the right way from the inside out. What is Justin doing that has shown that he's taken that next step? I think the way that he commands things at the line of scrimmage is, uh, is drastically different. I mean, that voice is strong now. You know, I wouldn't call him a baritone yet, you know, he's, but he's not a high C anymore. I mean, he's, it's coming out stronger. Um, he has complete command and understanding of the run game and the pass game. And that's a huge step for a quarterback because everybody always feels a quarterback just has to find the open guy. And there's so much more, especially as it relates to protection. And he's in here night and day. I mean, we have to kick him out of the building, you know. I don't kick him out, but you know what I mean. He's in here all the time. And uh, he sets a high standard for our guys. And he does it in the classroom as well. So you've got the best of both worlds right there. So obviously every day that we see Justin around here, it's, it's big smiles. What's the guys behind Justin? How are they doing? They're doing well, and they know they have to compete. And, and you know what? We keep telling our guys this. Um, everybody in life, for the most part, wants an easy path. We are teaching nothing if we provide that for our guys. If we provide the path of least resistance in such a competitive world, what are we doing for our young men, for our student athletes? And we tell them all the time, one day, God willing, you'll be in a room with six other wide receivers in an NFL camp. And a couple of you guys are going home. And the guy beside you, well, he's been there about eight years and has his eight-bedroom house, and he doesn't want to give that up. And the guy behind you, they just drafted him, and he wants his shot, and he's not going to help you. So you've got to teach our guys to be in that shark tank all the time. Uh, the difference in college is it's more of a partnership. Competition must be embraced, and that's how you build a better team. But we all know when there's someone nipping at our heels, our best is going to come out or our worst is going to come out. But either way, we got an answer as to what we have. You signed Cody out of high school. He was talked about as a guard or a center. Yeah. He's been at tackle this spring. Would you see in that move, and how has that transition? We'd going? like him to be inside. He's had difficulty snapping the ball, but he's working at it. Um, and in the meantime, with you know, we don't have a ton of bodies in the spring, so we have to be a little bit versatile, be a little bit diverse, and make sure that we can get a couple of snaps off. But uh, he's progressing nicely. He was hurt last year, so he missed a lot of time. That's hard for a lineman. You know, those guys have to rep things again and again and again. But he's certainly, he's getting better. He's getting better. It's a little bit experimental. It's a little bit by need. But we like to move Cody inside and make him a guy that can snap the ball for us to be a full-time center. Coach, who's the best golfer on the team, both on the coaching staff There's and the players? nobody that's any good. I didn't see anybody. <laughs> I mean, we slice more balls and. I mean, thank God those nets come all the way over and about 200 <laughs> feet high because we would have annihilated every car in the parking lot. Okay, so maybe next time we'll try, uh, I don't know, you guys give us some. We'll have a cornhole tournament, a bowling <laughs> tournament, but 
the golf thing, I don't know. It was fun, but uh, sure didn't work out from a skill standpoint. And luckily for our players and our coaches, our jobs and scholarships don't depend on it. I wasn't <laughs> seeing all those fans in Portland show up. That was awesome. You know, and it was especially with the, with the conditions weren't great. It, um, it certainly wasn't a chamber of commerce type of day, but uh, they showed up and they, they, they provided a great atmosphere. Our guys loved it, especially after the fact so many waited there and came out to be around them, to be able to high five them and whatnot. Uh, we got to do that more. You know, we got to schedule a couple times out there, you know, and uh, maybe we'll make it a golf tournament one day and then a bowling tournament the next day or, you know, I don't know, open to suggestions, so let yeah. me know. What have you uh, seen out of uh, Tony Brooks James and uh, what are your expectations for him here in his senior season? Tony Brooks James has committed himself to being a more physical downhill runner. And I think a lot of times you look at him and you say, well, that's not a really big guy, but he is, uh, he's built really well and he can withstand a lot. Uh, and when he gets his pads down, he runs with some pretty good power. He's become a much more disciplined and committed player, in our opinion. Love being around him because he's bringing a lot of juice. And you've seen it probably, well, you guys are on here during practice. He has come out the front side of a couple plays, you know, in practice so far that once he does, it's, you know, the defense still chases, but it's like, okay, <laughs> I'll chase because I want to, you know, I want to make sure I do what I'm supposed to on a film, but he's gone. You know, he's a hard guy to uh, contain. So we got to find ways to continue to put him in situations where he has space and he has the ability to kind of make some big and explosive plays for us. Where's Schooler made the biggest strides? Is it like route running or his hands or? I think both. Yeah. Schooler's a really driven, committed guy. And uh, he's, a, he's a team favorite now. I mean, they, he's a popular guy in that locker room. And it's not just because of long hair looking like the ultimate warrior or anything like that. He is a really good human being. He is a great teammate, and he grinds at it. He wants to be great. Remember, he's only been back to wide receiver for one year. He was a defensive back before that, and there's transition that goes with that. That's not easy. That's not easy. So a lot of respect and love for him. He was one of the top performers in Saturday's scrimmage, and that last catch he had right there really, I'll tell you what, that, that set the tone for some things to come with him.